Okay, so I want to talk about biological sex and what is biological sex. And this conversation comes on the back of a number of exchanges that I've had and observed over the years. If you are on online social media, you cannot help but have noticed the vitriol that has surrounded this conversation over the last few years, seemingly with a couple of different camps that aren't any closer to understanding one another now than when the conversation started. So I want to try and give you my perspective on this. Now, I think a lot of the vitriol stems because of the status of trans people within society and the discussions that have taken place there. And I think one of the problems with it is, is that there is a band of people who have, I would suggest quite persuasively, made the argument that your gender is not the same as your biological sex, and that your biological sex is this thing here, and that your gender is this thing which may be related, but is actually over here. Unfortunately, there are some people in this camp who are having quite persuasively, in my view, made the argument that your gender is not your biological sex, now effectively want to make the argument well actually your biological sex is your gender and so if you've shifted your gender your biological sex kind of tracks onto it there's not much that I can say with regard to that other than that just isn't true but beyond that there's perhaps this more sophisticated argument with this apparent unresolvable difference which I propose to you is resolvable so I want to outline this here and then you can come back to me and tell me if you think that you, you quite like the model the, the, or, or the way of presenting it that I've made here or that you see particular problems and then you can you can critique and criticize what I've said but I, I, I formulate the problem like this that effectively you have two camps on the one hand you have people who regard biological sex as a binary by definition and there are just two roles and that is the end of it and then there are other people who say well actually biological sex is something that is expressed on a spectrum you may say that it's a bimodal distribution rather than a spectrum but effectively it is expressed on a spectrum uh, and, and isn't a binary in those terms I propose to you that both of those things are true and although they may look contradictory and like two things that would not be happy bedfellows in actual fact, if you understand the difference between the essential and accidental properties of something, then you can understand how they not only coexist, but quite happily coexist. So to try and explain what I mean, let me give you an example, just to show you how, how quite comfortably these kinds of ideas can exist. So I'm going to give you some properties that you will associate with something. And I want you to try and think in your head what it is that all these properties are associated with. OK, so I'm going to start firing you these properties, see how long it takes you. I don't think, given the example I'm picking, it will take you very long. OK, parrots, eye patches, wooden legs. You'll be there already. OK, but let's keep going. Uh, planks that you can walk down. Spanish doubloons, pieces of eight, treasure chests, treasure maps, deserted islands, cackling voices that sort of go, ha ha, miates, right? I think that's probably enough. I think you know where I'm aiming here. These are properties that we associate with pirates, okay? Now, the reason that I'm giving you these properties is that I know that as soon as I'm giving you those properties, you will have an image of a pirate in your mind. It might not be a genuine pirate. It's a kind of glamorized fantasy, mythological uh, a pirate from the age of high European empires there. And it's not a very realistic uh, representation of pirates back in the day. But these are things that we associate with pirates. But these are all accidental properties of pirates. None of them are the essential property of being a pirate. The essential property of being a pirate, at least of this kind, is that you sail or otherwise navigate on the high seas and you plunder or steal from other vessels. Right. That is the essential property of being a pirate. Now, here's the thing. You either possess that essential property or you don't. So you're either a pirate or you're not. I could I could have a wooden leg and I mean I, I, it would probably be a little bit a little bit over the top just for the sake of, 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 of this video, but I could I could have the bottom half of one of my legs chopped off. Uh, and, and have a wooden leg. I could have my eye gouged out and have an eye patch. I could purchase a parrot, train it to sit on my shoulder. Um, I could 
try and invest in some treasure and bury it on a deserted island. And you've seen, I've demonstrated I can do the voice. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha! I could do all those things. Right? But unless and until I sail on the high seas and plunder and steal from other vessels, I am not a pirate. I'm just somebody who is putting on the trappings of piracy. I'm somebody who's trying to look like a pirate, but I'm not a pirate. Conversely, if I sail on the high seas and plunder and steal from other vessels, I am a pirate, regardless of how I express myself. I could wear a tuxedo like James Bond when he's going in the casino. I could wear full clown regalia, uh, replete with those giant shoes with the big domed ends, right? And I would still be ev every part as much a pirate uh, as if I dressed in the, the traditional pirate sense. Because the essential characteristic of being a pirate is plundering and stealing other vessels on the high seas. It isn't all those other things. So, but nevertheless, if I am a pirate, how I express myself as a pirate does exist on a spectrum. I can have those trappings of piracy or I cannot have those trappings of piracy. So it's quite simple how those two things can coexist. And so if you then go back to looking at biological sex, you can do the same thing. But you can only do the same thing once you understand what is the essential property or properties of biological sex and what are not the essential properties of biological sex. Now, the first one to get out the way is that chromosomes are not an essential property of biological sex. What they are effectively is a building block. It's the equivalent in the UK. Bricks are the standard building block of houses. But I know that you can build things other than houses out of bricks. And in other countries, houses are more often than not built out of wood and not out of bricks. So you can't define a house as something that is built out of bricks, just the same as you can't define maleness as having 46 XY chromosomes. Because you can ha be chromosomally 46 XY and not be male, and you can have other chromosomes and not be male. Okay, so, so this is the thing. Chromosomes are effectively a building method that can be used to build male bodies in some species, but it is not the definition. Other things that we associate with maleness, such as a beard, such as a penis, or such as a crest, are associated with maleness, but they are not the defining characteristic. I used to keep newts, great crested newts, newts of the genus Triturus. Those newts, the male of those species, had a crest. But the male of that species could not grow a beard and does not possess a penis. That does not make the male of that species any more or less male than me. There is another species or a group of species of cave-dwelling insects where the female of the species has a penis. Right. So, so what's going on here? How are we defining maleness and femaleness if it isn't chromosomes and it isn't the presence or absence of a penis? Well, of course, it is the gametes you produce. In each and every case across the animal kingdom, where we see a sexually reproducing species, how we define the male and the female is based upon the gametes they produce and the gonads, whether they have the requisite gonads to produce that kind of gametes. So if you produce the smaller, more mobile gametes that we call sperm, then you are defined as male. If you produce the larger, less mobile gametes, you are defined as female. <coughs> Excuse me. Hence, in the case of those cave-dwelling insects, the individuals with a penis nevertheless have the larger, less mobile gametes. And effectively, what they do is they insert the penis into the male and draw out the sperm out of the male rather than the male in, inserting a penis and, 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 uh, and using that as a mechanism to get the sperm into the female. That's how it works. We look at the gametes and the gonads. That is what we look at. We don't look at these other things. All these other things are accidental properties including a penis, right? For a human being, for a male outside of the laboratory to, 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 to function as a male, a penis is essential, but it's not 
philosophically speaking, an essential property of maleness because it doesn't define maleness. If humans as a species, if the, if the humans as a species that had a penis were the ones that produced eggs, then for human beings, a penis would be a female characteristic. It, it's putting the cart before the horse or the cart after the horse. All these accidental properties are properties we associate with males or females because they are properties that align in that species with those that produce sperm or those that produce eggs. And so when you look at it from that perspective, there really is people quoting articles from different magazines, including scientific publications, where they're they're, they're showing these pieces where they're saying, well, yeah, sex exists and is expressed on a spectrum and waving them in people's faces and saying, so there you go, sex is not a binary. We're talking about two different things here. We're talking about the accidental properties which are associated with the biological sexes, which of course are expressed uh, differently in different individuals, just as they're expressed differently in different species. And then we are talking about that which defines biological sex, because underpinning all of this is the business of sexual reproduction. The reason we label anything male or female is not to give everything a nice little title. It's because we're quite trying to describe a process. And male and female are simply the roles within that process and the individuals that we choose to label male or female what we're trying to do is to label the individuals who fulfill those different roles and those roles are invariant across the animal kingdom it is a sperm provider and an ovum provider an egg provider those are the roles and that is what defines the biological sexes it would be so much more useful if we could get away from this conflation, I think, and this misunderstanding of what biological sex is, and the idea that it's one or the other, that either the, that it's these characteristics, these accidental properties, which are very important, especially in the social sphere, that are expressed as a sort of bimodal distribution, and don't always neatly line up in individuals, and the binary of biological sex that is defining the two roles of sexual reproduction which are these essential properties and so of course that brings us neatly onto the business of intersex conditions and the claims that intersex conditions challenges this notion that we've got that sex exists as a binary i suppose in a way it does challenge that it does challenge the idea that these these things that we associate with biological sex these accidental properties exist in some kind of neat binary arrangement rather than than a bimodal distribution but that doesn't mean it challenges the essential properties and the fact that what we're describing in biological sex the whole purpose of having it in the first place is to define these two discrete binary roles that exist within sexual reproduction we could certainly go back to our pirate analogy here and imagine that we have a population of pirates it's all dressed in this stereotypical way, um, plundering ships on the high seas. And then we have a group of, uh, uh, of, of um, clowns all dressed in a stereotypical way. Uh, and we allow them to intermingle and get to know each other. And after a period of time, we find that there are some people who were the pirates who now have one of those little squirty flowers on their top or some of those big... Uh, comedy shoes who, or who when they are on land drive a car that have doors that fall off okay so now they are expressing some of the accidental properties of being a clown and maybe some of the clowns now have a, a parrot on their shoulder uh, or a hook where one of their hands was so the, the clowns are now expressing some of the properties the accidental properties that we could associate with pirates so now we could look at these two populations and say that they're not a binary in terms of how they're expressing themselves as clowns as pirates or as clowns but nevertheless in terms of the, the essential property that defines them, we still know which are the pirates and which are the clowns when they go off to work. Those that go onto a boat and then take off into the high seas and start stealing other people's vessels 
are the pirates, regardless of what they wear. And those that go to the circus and go into the, the big top and put, perform a, a, an incredibly unfunny comedy routine, those are the ones that we define as the clowns. And that is the same thing with intersex conditions. If you look at intersex conditions, almost every intersex condition is defined as a condition that affects males. Uh, Kleinfelter syndrome is a condition, is an intersex condition that affects biological males. 5-alpha reductase deficiency syndrome, of course, one that I've talked about a lot because that's what Castor Semenya has, is an intersex condition that affects biological males. In each and every instance, it's an intersex condition uh, is a condition in terms of the expression of those accidental properties that we associate with the biological sexes. It is not in some ways an impingement on those essential characteristics. Okay. That's it. Look, this conversation is a complicated one. It's complicated enough with the business of gender identity and expression and legal sex and then biological sex and then also the idea of sport sex in the sphere of sport uh, and the, the physiological components of biological sex that are germane to sport versus the ones that are not. This is a very, very complicated subject without having these additional and, in my view, wholly unnecessary discussions where we can't really understand that the business of biological sex in terms of the expression of those characteristics we associate with the sexes can happily exist on a spectrum as a, as a bimodal distribution, but nevertheless there be a firm technical binary that is a function of the definition of sexual reproduction itself. Okay, I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any criticisms or critiques, please do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comments box. If you enjoyed it, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. If you really like my material and like to support it, I'll leave you the links to my Patreon, etc., etc. That's it. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and bye.